Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about building packages inside of Debian. And with the specifics we are going to talk about is how to take something in Debian and figure out how to build the package and also do some small changes to it. Uh, and what came up the <laughs> fix this idea for me was that we actually had a package at work that did not work because of a bug that were introduced in ProFTPD and we could not go up to the next version because it's not available yet and we wanted to run the latest version of Buster on a Debian system. So we were in a little bit of a pickle because the version we had did not work and we needed to do some code changes. So let's look into how to do that step by step. So let's switch over to my screen here. So here is my builder machine. So here I want to build uh, this package. So the first thing we need to do is actually install the building uh, essentials. And to do that, we install uh, pkg uh, dev. So that's the dev uh, development kit for installing packages. And then we need the dev scripts. So let's install those two. That installed a lot of different packages. The first one was actually installed for some reason. And this is a pure uh, standard buster. I have not done anything to it, not installed any packages. So this is clean from the start. It had the, P, uh, the DPKJ, which is the package manager for uh, Debian, installed with the dev dependencies for some reason in the standard installation. So let's wait for this to finish and I'll get back to you. So now that we have installed all those dependencies that we need in order to build packages, we want to continue to get the sources that we want to build. So let's look at the specific sources. And in order to do that, we first off need to edit our sources list. So if we go into apt sources list here and what we need to look for is this deb source so we need to see that we actually have the source dependencies for our packages and it seems like they are installed here if you are missing those you need to add them in and then do an apt update to have those packages in your list of available packages after that we can do atp source and in this case, we have pro FDPD basic, and that's a package that I want to get. And it's actually called pro FDPD DFSG. And now we have downloaded those, and it has actually applied a lot of different patches. So if you want to do this without um, downloading the package this way, what you had to do is if we look here, we have this package directory and we have the original source code and the Debian pack, uh, patches. And if we look into this pro FTPD uh, dir, we have a Debian directory and in that we have the patches directory. So all these patches that you have here, we have to get those and install those manually but with this process of downloading the source using ATP, it actually adds those dependencies for us. So let's go into this package again, and then look at the specific change that we want to do. So if we switch over to our um, little uh, browser here, you see that this little bug was actually introduced in the this, which made the server disconnect in some cases uh, before it actually had gotten the whole file and in our case that mean meant that some customer was sending files over and over and never were able to actually send them over to us so let's see here we need to find this in our file and then apply this um, extra or case so it can either be e again or e interrupt and those are valid cases so let's go back here 
and the file that we want to edit in this case were the source data C and we wanted to look for this expression here so e x r no equals equals and here uh, I'm just gonna do this change just uh, for the just so we have it in here but your changes can actually be quite extensive and you might want to uh, apply a patch that can be supplied by some of these uh, of the people that uh, have written the code so they can actually have supplied a patch for this in this case there were no patch and if i wanted to patch this specific file i would have had a problem uh, that uh, it actually let's see so we do the right changes everywhere yeah so now i've done the sh change on these three places so now the actual package is ready to be built we have downloaded the source code applied the patches we have applied the extra patch that we wanted to have in our source and now we need to build the package and first be before we can do that we actually need the dependencies as well we need the dependencies for this package so let's go in here here and take pro ftpd basic uh, so let's get the build dependencies for that package and when that is installed it installs everything that is needed to build this package and it can be more that you than you need to actually run the package because it will build in different dependencies for all the modules that will be in your package as well so it's not only the things that you want to run it's all the different header files that are required to link in different modules which could be a lot more now that that is done we need to do the actual building and this is just a dpj build uh, package we want to do an r fake root so we can make a package that then can be installed in our environment without actually installing it in our environment so it will create a fake root where usr is usr and it builds into that and then packages that fake root and we also need to have a few more flags for this build the binary package only we want to not do cryptic um, do a cryptographic sign on this package and we don't want to sign the source package uh, either so those are just flags to add to this building process it will go through and build this package and i'll get back to you when it's actually built and there we go the building process is done we have in, uh, built all the packages and if we go up to our root directory again here we can see that we got a lot more uh, depend dep uh, packages here we first off have the pro ftpd basic package and with debugging symbols so we can actually install that as well we have some dev package don't really know what that is then we have the uh, the packages the things that we downloaded before and then we have a doc package and a bunch of different modules here so if you require mysql or postgres or sqlized because you save your user information in the database you have those specific uh, modules here but you can also just run the basic uh, package but this was a part of this uh, source package which built all the dependencies so these are pretty much the same packages as if you built uh, got them from debian the only thing is that they are not signed and they <laughs> have that code change that i added so let's uh, copy this file over this pro ftpd basic because i just want the specific server over to my installer machine so let's do root at installer and we can put that in the root directory there and i need to put in the root uh, password 
see if I, uh, I'm not sure if you are uh, able to, no, I can't uh, give it to root. So let's send it to uh, a user instead. So let's put it in the home directory. Uh, because you can't really send files to root if you can't log in with the root. And with uh, Buster, you're not allowed to log in as root uh, from SSH. So let's log into the installer and install this package. So here we need to do sudo uh, dpkj install and this Debian package that we just built. So the pro FTPD basic deb and we need to supply the password for the sudo. So that will install that package. But now we have some libraries that are missing, so it can't actually run. So what we need to do then is run a sudo atp install dash f, which will fix the missing dependencies for this package. So after we have installed that, the pro FTPD basic will actually be set up and working in our environment. So let's check if we have a working uh, pro FTPD. So let's uh, grep for it in our process list. It's not running. Let's look at the system controller here. If we have a pro FTPD uh, system. Oh, we have it's loaded but not started so let's try to start it and we have an access denied for that of course so let's see here status and we have a bunch of warning so it failed uh, warning error error so let's uh, cap the log file instead or log Pro FTPD. Uh, Pro FTPD. Log. Let's go in as Sue. Um, uh, bar log. Pro FTPD, let's see, controls, doesn't have anything in it. So let's see here. It should not be running now, right? It's not. So let's run it from the console here. No valid service, uh, service configured. Uh, unable to determine address installer so let's see here we can put in to the hosts file 192 168 uh, 628 installer see if that helps that helped a lot uh, so we needed to have a name for our system so let's kill that again uh, and start it via, via the service instead, the way it should be started. System control status pro FTPD and start. So now we have the service running in our system and this will be started when the actual uh, server is started. So let's switch over to my client here where I can actually create a new connection. And these are hard to read when they are so small. <laughs> Go in here and test it out. Go to the network tab, create a new connection. And our port is our new server here, username and password. That's not in the password field, that will not work. But up here we can just put in anything and it connects. So now we are in our system and we can upload a file. 
So, and we also see this ProFTBD basic file Debian package that we uh, copied over there. So our FTP server is working and we have installed it out in our system. I know that the last part was not really visible because it's very tiny when it's 10 points, but it is a working server. So that was what I wanted to cover today. How to take a Debian package that you uh, have in your system and realize that you have a bug in it that you need to fix. There is no newer version, there is no newer uh, system version or anything like that, but you still want to have the Debian package as is what's built, but with a specific patch. You download the source code, apply the patch, build the package, and install it in your system. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.